Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well on your end today. Welcome to the Identity and Access Management Quick Fix channel, where I will be providing you simple and quick fixes for known issues in your cloud enterprise environment. Now, today we will be looking at pending devices in Azure AD Quick Fix. Now, if we jump right into our agenda for today, we have three points we will be looking at. Number one, what is a pending device? What causes device pending state? And how to troubleshoot and resolve pending devices in Azure AD? Now, our first point here is, what is a pending device? A pending device is simply a device that is synced or synchronized to Azure AD from your on-premise Active Directory, but has not completed the registration with Azure AD device registration service. Now this pending state, once the device is in this pending state, that device cannot complete any authentication or authorization requests, such as primary refresh token for SSO, or that device will not apply device-based conditional access policy. I want you to note that this pending device exists only for hybrid AD joint devices and not Azure AD joint devices or Azure AD registered devices. Now, when a device is joined to Azure AD through hybrid configuration that is synchronized from your on-premise AD to Azure AD through AD Connect, the tax will sync the device object to Azure AD and temporarily set the register state of the device to pending before the device completes the registration. Now, the reason for this is because the device must be added to Azure AD directory before it can be registered. That is just straightforward. Now, this lets us know that the registration process, during this process, there is a point where the device state is pending, but this should be temporary and not something permanent. If it's going on for a longer time, then we'll have to dive deeper into troubleshooting, which we'll be doing on our next slide. We have your causes of pending devices in Azure AD. There are two possible scenarios here we will be looking at. One is new device being synchronized to Azure AD. Now, do not get me wrong, not all new devices have this problem. I have had hundreds of devices, new devices that I've synchronized to Azure before without issues, but sometimes, yeah, it happens. We have some new devices that we are trying to synchronize to Azure and it's just not completing the synchronization process. And this can likely be caused by scenarios such as the device cannot connect to the registration service. And our second point here is device state changed to pending, which tells us that before the pending state, the device was once registered, there was a full registered date attached to this device in Azure AD. But for some reason or configuration or changes done, maybe on premise, I believe so, the device is now showing up in Azure as pending. So we will be looking at troubleshooting steps for each of these points right here. Now, our first option here, new device sync to Azure. The first thing we wanna do is to retrieve the device joint status by running the DSREC command slash status and gathering the output. You can copy that and paste it in a notepad or wherever that best suits you, but just have the output before you once you run that DSREC command. Remember to run that command in an elevated mode. And now step two, what we wanna do is to elevate, is to evaluate rather the device joint status. Now, during our evaluation, we will be looking for specifics like device join, uh, domain joint rather set to yes, which means the device is joined to our local active directory domain services and workplace join set to no, which means the device is not joined to Azure AD as a personal device or as a Azure AD registered. And the next point we wanna look at is Azure AD join should be set to yes, which indicates that 
the device is joined to Azure either through Azure AD join or hybrid. But in our scenario, we just want the device to be hybrid AD join and not there as pending. Now, for step three, we will have to find a phase in which the join process failed. Now, if you go down a little bit to the diagnostics data where you have previous registration, you will see a display right there, just like you see on your screen. And this session will display only if the device is joined to your local domain and is unable to hybrid AD join. Now, once you see that output there for you, you wanna go to your event viewer. Look at the path that I have here on the screen, drive, uh, drill down into it, and then look for event ID's 304, 305, and 307. You should see exact error messages that are related to the device join status in Azure AD. Now, there are other possible causes we want to look at and resolutions. One is that line of sight to DC. In order for your hybrid uh, device to complete the registration process, the device must be on an organization's internal network or on a virtual network with network line of sight to an on-premise AD domain controller. If not, this can also cause pending devices in Azure AD. Our next option is your SCP MIS configuration. In order to complete this joint process, we have to have a valid service connection point object. This is required in the AD forest, the Active Directory forest to which, to which the device belongs. Uh, that points to a verified domain in Azure AD. If this is misconfigured or it is not valid, this can also cause pending devices in Azure AD. Now, our next point is the uh, discovery metadata. The device should be able to access the enterprise registration.windows.net in a system context in order to discover the registration and authorization endpoint. If not, this can also cause pending devices in Azure AD. Our next option is user realm endpoint. Now, the device should be able to access that login.microsoft.com uh, endpoint in order to uh, do realm discovery for the verified domain and determine whether or not that domain is managed or it is federated. Now, if these are not done, these additional four options here, these can also be not together. I mean, just any one of them is incomplete. This can also lead to pending devices in Azure AD. Now we'll jump straight into our last option here, device state changed to pending. Now, uh, this scenario can occur as a result of um, a device object being moved from an organizational unit that is in a synchronization scope and placed in another OU that is not in a synchronization scope. And now Azure AD Connect will recognize this change as the device is being deleted in the on-premise AD. And realistically, the device is not deleted. It is just being changed, but AD Connect sees it as the device is, de is deleted. So the device is then deleted in Azure AD. And now, if it is noticed or somebody picked that out real quick and be like, hey, the device is not showing up in Azure, then we can go ahead and put the device back in the OU that is in synchronization scope or the OU that is already in, we can just take that OU and put it in synchronization scope so that AD Connect can try to uh, sync all of the objects in that OU. Now, once this synchronization is run, that Delta sync is run, Azure AD will create a pending device opted for this device in Azure AD and will fail to complete the device registration process. And the reason is simple, is because the device was registered previously. Now, in order to solve this issue here with device take pending, change to pending, we have to unregister the device by running the DS right 
uh, this time we'll be using the slash leave command in an elevated prompt and then restart the device. Once we do this, this will reinitiate the device registration process to the tax schedule. And um, we can restart the device. And once the tax schedule is complete, this should be able to get the device out of pending state in Azure AD. And I will be pasting in the description below a couple of links there for you, all of the, uh, the uh, connection points, the endpoints that are accessible for the uh, options that I showed to you earlier. And uh, guys, thank you for watching. This is all we have for quick fix on pending devices in Azure AD. Please let us know in the comment section below if any of these solutions worked for you or if you have tried a different solution and it worked for you, we'll be happy to hear from you. Thank you for watching and have yourself a good day.